we're gonna start today's video with something that is so common sense and because it's so obvious, I don't think a lot of people are doing it. Welcome back to RV Tips and Travels. I'm Ross, I've been RVing for seven years now. Stick around to the end of the video. I'm gonna show you a recent modification I just did that will shave a little bit of time off your setup process. So at our last campground, I wake up, we have no power. I go outside to check the breaker. The campground manager comes over, tells us we don't have power. You're not gonna have water either because it's on a well, which requires a pump. So if this happens to you, now you're in a jam because you don't have any water. But there is a simple fix and all it requires is updating your travel day checklist. And all you have to do is add five or 10 gallons of fresh water in your tank before you hit the road. Having some water in your tank allows you to stop and use the bathroom, wash your hands, have access to water for a number of different emergencies while on the road, and only adding five or 10 gallons doesn't put a lot of weight in your RV. Then once you arrive at the campground, go ahead and fill your fresh water tank even if you use the city water connection lines, even if you have bottled water. That way you have a backup of reserve water in case you need it. Then when it's time to head out, drop all but five or 10 gallons and you'll have a little bit of water in your tank for the road. There's always stuff left in your black tank after the initial dump. As the water tank empties, the flow slows down and things are gonna rest at the bottom of the tank. Now, using a black tank flush port definitely helps clean the walls a little bit, but it's not providing that pressure and flow to pull everything out. So one of the best ways to keep your black tank clean is after you dump it, refill it or partially refill it and dump everything a second or third time. Today, I wanna to share with you guys a rinsing method that I haven't talked about on the channel yet. It doesn't involve a bucket, holding down the flush pedal, or using a black tank flush port. Now, you've probably seen these before. This is definitely not a new product, but I wanna show you some modifications I made to make this more effective and safer to use. Before I do a demo of this, it comes with a vacuum breaker, which is essentially a one-way valve that allows water to flow in, but not out. And this is what prevents us from contaminating the fresh water source. You should absolutely be using a vacuum breaker anytime you're rinsing your black tank using a water source. Now, Camco is doing the responsible thing by including one with the kit. I just don't have a lot of faith in plastic vacuum breakers. So the first modification I did was replace it with a brass vacuum breaker. These are inexpensive. They're going to last a much longer time. They're rated for 125 PSI, which is much more pressure than we're gonna need in our application. There are two things on this vacuum breaker that I wanna talk about really quickly. First, you're gonna see a set screw on the side. This is actually a breakaway screw. It's designed so that once this is installed, you tighten this down and the tip will break off and it makes it more difficult to remove. This is not needed for our application, nor should you be using this on a plastic fitting. We'll talk about that in a second. So go ahead and just remove this. There's also a manual release button on the inside of the vacuum breaker. This is also not going to be used in our application. However, there's a debris filter on the rinser that will interfere with this manual release button and we don't want that to happen. Just remove the screen gasket and flip it around so the side that sticks out is away from the vacuum breaker. Now you can connect the brass vacuum breaker to the Rhino Blaster and the second modification involves connecting a water flow meter to the vacuum breaker. Earlier I mentioned removing this breakaway screw because it will damage plastic fittings. It's going to connect to the water flow meter and that's why we wanna remove this. This is also something you wanna be using anytime you're backfilling a black tank. I'm using the Save a Drop P3 water flow meter. I did a review on this meter. I'll put a link to that video down below. Connect this to your sewer pipe and hose as shown and connect the hose to the flow meter. Now, even though we're using a vacuum breaker, you should never use your freshwater hose. Always have a dedicated freshwater hose and a separate dedicated hose for anything involving waste tanks. Step one, we wanna dump our black tank. Turn the water hose valve on the Rhino Blaster Pro perpendicular to the fitting so that it's closed. The dump valve on the RV is going to stay open for this entire process, so let's open that. Pull open the gate valve on the Rhino Blaster to completely dump and drain your black tank. Once the black tank is empty, we're gonna backfill it so we can rinse it. Close the gate valve on the Rhino Blaster. Open the water hose fitting on the Rhino Blaster to turn on your water source and start filling up your sewer pipe. Because the gate valve on the Rhino Blaster Pro is closed, it will not allow water to flow out to the sewer, so it will backfill your black tank. Now you do need to know your black tank capacity, but this is where the water flow meter comes into play so we don't overflow our black tank. My black tank is 39 gallons. A good rule of thumb is to fill it up about 75% of the way. Once my flow meter is around 30 gallons, I'm going to turn off the water and dump the tank again by opening the gate valve on the Rhino Blaster. And as I mentioned earlier, you can see on the second dump, I still have stuff coming out of the tank. Now guys, let me show you something else because 
because I know a lot of you have this issue. There's still a tiny bit of water coming out, but for the most part, the black tank is now empty. Let me take you inside and show you that my tank sensors are reading correctly. Now I've been using tank treatment since 2017. I've never seen any evidence of sludge. Some people will tell you that that's gonna happen if you use tank treatments, but again, no issues here. And after seven years, my sensors are working perfectly by just maintaining my black tank and rinsing my tank after I dump. I will admit it, I think I like this product and this method better than what I've been using in the past. And here's the really great thing about this method. Once you get everything initially set up, you can just connect this when you're setting up your sewer hose so it's ready to go and rinse the tank after you dump the tank. It's also worth mentioning to be courteous if you're at a public dump station and there's a line of RVs behind you, just put five or 10 gallons of water back in your tank and rinse at another time. So there's a whole lot of things going on underneath your slide outs that you may have never thought about. Slide outs are at the perfect height to come in contact with small children and pets. And even if you don't RV with small children or pets, there's probably gonna be situations where you're gonna to need to crawl underneath an open slide to check or retrieve something. Now, you can't do anything about the edges of the slides except add some pool noodles if you want, but go ahead, jump underneath your slides and look for sharp edges on the bottom of your slide. The way slides are designed sometimes leaves sheet metal edges that can actually harm someone underneath. I recently saw a Facebook post where somebody had a dog who got injured underneath the slide. Now, don't worry, the dog got some stitches and is going to fully recover, but you can minimize this by bending some of those sharp metal edges up like I did. One thing you wanna make sure of though is anything that you modify underneath your slide isn't going to interfere with anything else when the slide is closed. Something else you wanna check while you're underneath your slide is any wiring that extends with the slide when it opens and closes. You'll see wiring and possibly a propane hose if you have an absorption fridge in your slide. And they are moving every time the slide goes in or out. So every so often just crawl underneath your slide and check for damage. Check the condition of the ties used to hold everything together. The connection points may be in specific spots so they fold up properly when the slide is brought in. So just mark on the bottom of the slide where those ties are placed in case one ever fails. If you're enjoying the video, please let us know by leaving us a comment, hitting that like button, and we hope you consider subscribing. We can continue making free content for you guys because of our sponsors. In fact, RV snap pads are now available for travel trailers, but these are a little bit different. Introducing RV snap jacks. Just like the snap pads you've probably seen for auto leveling systems, snap jacks are designed for the scissor stabilizer jacks you'll find on most travel trailers. RV snap jacks have up to 274% more surface area than a scissor jack foot, and with more ground contact comes much more stability. The pads are made from 100% recycled tire rubber, which not only conforms to rocky and uneven surfaces better than a metal plate, they also provide better grip and less sinkage into soft ground. They protect your RV's landing gear from wear and tear, plus they also protect your driveway or campsite from scraping and rust stains. Installation is simple. Lower your scissor jacks, remove the two bolts and the scissor jack foot, line up the new replacement foot, install the new bolts, and you're done. There's a lot of different sizes and options available. I'll put a link down below in the video description that'll take you to their website and automatically take 10% off of your order. Here's a cheap time-saving modification you can make if your water hose connects to your wet bay inside your RV. So in the past, I ran my hose up through this latch and connected via the threaded fitting to my 90 degree fitting. Unfortunately, I have to turn the 90 towards the wall so I have access to the rinse faucets down below. Now this doesn't take long, but it's a pain sometimes to thread the hose on here every time you're setting up. So I picked up these quick disconnects that allow you to connect your water hose in a matter of literally one second. Now, instead of just putting the quick connect on my 90, I picked up a two foot hose extension that threads onto the 90. I drop this down the hatch when I'm setting up, and now my water hose connects to the extension under the RV. And the reason I use this hose extension is if the quick disconnect ever starts to leak, it will leak underneath the RV and not inside the pass-through storage. 